Hello and welcome back to Tinglewinger 5. Today we're going to take a look at a Terramaster NAS. Now this guy is sent to me by the guys at Terramaster to have a look at. So let's open it up and see what we get inside the box. The box itself I thought was quite plain. Uh, this is the Terramaster F2 220. Uh, let's open it up and see what we've got inside. So at the front here we've got a box with all the equipment you're going to be needing for uh, setting the NAS up and having it running on a day to day basis. And the actual NAS component here. So the F2220 is a two bay NAS, uh, like the QNAT we looked at earlier this year. Uh, let's see what we get inside. So inside the box you get the power supply as you'd expect. Uh, this comes actually with a US plug in this bag, uh, and then there's a UK plug in this bag, which is, I guess, useful. A little screwdriver for attaching the hard drives, nice and handy of course. Nice Cat5 cable, Cat5e. A lot of screws. So we've got two sets of screws, one for the 2.5 inch drives and one for the 3.5 inch drives. Some warranty information and then you can have a look at the quick start guide and the general instructions. But let's have a look at the actual NAS itself. So despite the plain packaging it's actually come pretty well packaged so it's pretty well protected inside the box and the box does have a nice handle on the top. So let's take a look at the actual NAS itself. You can see it's two bay as I described earlier. And on the back of the NAS here with a TerraMaster sticker which keeps the bag together. So let's open this up and have a look at the actual NAS. So we can see we've got a nice big fan on the back. And uh, we take the bag off the top. And we can see it's got a brushed aluminium sort of coating to it with plastic at the front, plastic at the back. And a nice attractive yellow sticker on the top. So having a look at the actual bays, we've got some two plastic drive bays, we've got a power button on the air front. Uh, around the side it's just an aluminium finish on the edge and it says Terramaster. On the back we've got a small fan, this thing's actually pretty quiet. Two USB ports, a LAN port and a DC input. So it comes with the power supply attached of course. So let's have a look at the drive bays. Now these are very easy to get out. You open from the bottom, so you pull them out and then you pull the actual drive bay out itself. The hard drives I'm going to be using, like before, are some 4TB Western Digital Red drives and they just easily slot into the drive bays themselves. So all you've got to do is line them up with the Saturn power adapters facing backwards, uh, turn them around and use the screws provided with the NAS drive. So we can see on the bottom we've got some spaces for some screws. So all you've got to do is line up the hard drive which is pretty much at the end, it's not quite at the end, but it's pretty much at the end and put the screws in. Don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, there's two sets of screws, one for the 3.5 inch hard drives and one for the 2.5 inch hard drives or solid state drives, whichever you want to use. Uh, I'd recommend using some 3.5 inch drives, but maybe you need it for some uh, other purposes which we need an SSD for. Now once the drives are attached to the caddies themselves, you need to be very careful about putting these in. They are numbered 1 and 2, so I've taken 1 to be on the left. At this stage it doesn't actually matter, but if you want to make uh, some adjustments later down the line, it's important to note which one you put in bay 1 and bay 2 and that you put them in correctly. See I put it in wrong there and it doesn't go in right. So the big yellow sticker on the top which describes how to actually put them in. So you put them in with the arm facing downwards. So arm facing down and you don't press on the arm itself, you press on the bottom and then you tuck the arm in. So you do not want to break these drive bays. So again pushed in from the bottom and the arm will move down a little bit just while it clicks into place and then you press so it down once the rest again of it up. to lock it. On the back I mentioned we've got two USB ports, a LAN port and a power port. Now obviously the power is going to come from uh, the DC adapter provided and the network port is just a normal Ethernet cable that you should plug into the back. I'm not going to plug in the USB ports for the time being, uh, I'll test that function later on, but it's fairly simple as it's just a USB plug. So now let's boot this NAS up. So booting the NAS up, obviously very simple, all we're going to do is press the button on the front and it has a little beep to tell you it's being turned on or being turned off. The lights light up and then eventually all the lights go green. So the LAN port, the hard drive port, everything. So the next thing we're going to do is set this thing up. So I use an app on my phone called Fing, F-I-N-G, and I can see at the bottom there 1.23 is my TerraMaster NAS. So now I type the IP address into my browser. I go through the start of the system and it's going to initialize the NAS for me. You can also do this with the provided software from TerraMaster on their website, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, but I prefer to go in via the IP address directly, which I found using my phone and Fing. So when you press start, it wants to auto download the latest software, or you can manually download it. So if you travel to the website provided, you choose your model of NAS from this menu. So in my case, I'm using the F2 220. And I travel to the menu inside here, and it actually prevent, uh, 
presents me with all of the options for the NAS itself. So I set it on auto setup and I recommend you guys do too. And then it goes through the setup process which takes upwards of an hour uh, in my experience. Uh, and then it just reboots itself nice and quickly. This is very sped up at the moment. Uh, it, it did take quite some time to actually download the software itself. But that's not a problem. This is the one time initialization. So got no complaints from me. And then right at the end what it's doing now is restarting the NAS itself for the process. I think it's just a timing based thing. You can now rename the NAS whatever you want. So I'm just going to call mine TM NAS because it doesn't allow a lot of characters here. So I wanted to call it TerraMaster NAS uh, but I didn't have enough space. So the name I'm going to set on is TM NAS then TerraMaster NAS with a hyphen in between. Set your time zone so I'm London GMT and let's have a look at what else I've got. So the admin is the ad admin is username, put your password in, that's fine. And then you put a security email in. So this is your email address that you want your verification code from Terramaster to come from. So the NAS is going to register itself back at the Terramaster servers. And then all you guys need to do is set everything up uh, from there. But it's also going to start to set up your account with Terramaster so you can access from anywhere. So when you enter your email address into the box, I blanked mine out because I wanted to use one particular email address which is not public. Uh, you then get sent a verification code from Terramaster themselves. So this is just to confirm that you're setting up your NAS and any security alerts you want to set from your NAS uh, will be sent to this email address, which I think is actually a pretty nice feature, if I'm honest. Going through this section, so when we put the verification code in, we then go on to how we want it set up. So there's various types of RAID it supports, everything from RAID 0, which is single disk, uh, at the bottom there, and then we've got RAID 1, 5, 6 and 10. What I always have to do is look up which RAID is rich, because I can never remember properly. So RAID 0 essentially means it's one disk. Uh, RAID 1 is what we'll be doing. We have 1, 5, 6 and 10 available. So RAID 1 is actually what I'm going to use and it's what I recommend you guys do as well. So RAID 5 and 6 uh, at the bottom there, uh, I think it's a little bit overkill for a two bay NAS. If you're going to use uh, more than two bays, then RAID 5 and 6 would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but for two disks, I think RAID 1 is sufficient. And you guys can look up this RAID information on Wikipedia. I'll put the link in the video description below. All RAID is is about how your data is backed up. So if you lose one disk, uh, will the other disk save you or will the other disk uh, not care at all? So if you put it in RAID 0, everything is tied to one disk. But RAID 1, you've got an actual backup. Uh, I did set uh, NASes to RAID 0 in the past, but that's when I needed storage capacity. Whereas this is a NAS that's going to be on all the time. So I actually want a RAID function to be set up. So when everything is formatted and the initialization is complete, you are ready to use your NAS. So we log in through the portal using the email and pass sorry the uh, username and password we set up before. And then we're able to map the network drive. So go to my computer from your computer, not through the web browser, just go to my computer and map a network drive. You then press browse on the right hand side and it brings up this menu. It'll then load the network up and you'll see your devices on the network which support it. And again, use the same username and password we set up before, so it's always admin and whatever password you want to use. You can remember your credentials if you want to, it's not something I do, uh, just on principle, but it's up to you guys if you want to do that. You then have an option to map the file system, so we choose a folder that we're going to set up. So I'm going to go into public, application and NAS. Connect on login, it's up to you. Uh, I want it connecting when I plug it in. So my NAS isn't going to be on all the time probably. So for this video I'm just going to set it up like so. You guys might want to set it up differently if your NAS is going to be on all the time. So what I'm going to do now is copy over some very large files. Uh, these are videos that I've rendered for a different channel. And the maximum usage I managed to get out of it is 20 watts. Which for a NAS like this I think is actually quite impressive. It's not using a lot of power at all. So if you guys want to leave it on all the time that's not too bad. But going back to the NAS menu, you can go through all the settings you've got here. So you've got a full file manager where you can access all your files, uh, move them around and stuff. You've got a full settings menu on the right hand side there. Uh, it has a recycle bin function which was actually pretty cool. Uh, and there's also other applications to be used in the menu here. Uh, where you can select the application from their app store and go through and install them. So there's some quick system information here just on the right hand side. You see it's got an Intel processor, 2GB RAM currently. Uh, I'll investigate if I can upgrade the RAM in this one and maybe do a follow-up video. Change the device name, see what the LAN settings are. 
and you can plug a USB Wi-Fi adapter in. And this is the app store I mentioned, so if you click on applications on the left hand side it presents you with this store. Uh, there's not much in here at the moment, but remember this NAS is significantly cheaper uh, than the NASs we've looked at previously. So I think actually it's a fairly good deal, because it does support Plex, it does support Dropbox, it can act as an iTunes server, and even a mail server, so it's actually a fairly useful little box. Uh, there's currently no ability to add third party apps to this, so anything outside of this app store is not supported currently. Uh, whether that will change in the future will remain to be seen, but you can have it running as a full media server, full Plex server, uh, and that's what we're going to go into next. So I'm a big fan of Plex, so let's have a look at how Plex works. So what I've done so far is gone into the Plex app and press login, and this is what we have. So great news, we found a server, well you are the server, so that's fantastic. So I'm going to name it the same thing, TM NAS, uh, allow access, of course, from outside my home, that's not going to be a problem for me. And then I can add the library, so the folders I created before uh, in the file manager or anything around that, uh, I'm happy to use those for my Plex library. Set up with movies, set up with TV, however I want to do it. I just go straight into the file menu system here and choose the folders I want. When it asks me to set up a music library, I can set up a premium one or I can set up uh, anything like that. I'm not going to bother for the time being because I don't know if I'm actually going to keep music on this NAS, uh, just some of the videos I've got. Uh, download the Plex Media Server, down to your media, and you can get apps for pretty much anything. So you can get apps for Windows, Apple TV, Roku, all of your smartphones, everything. So then we press done, and we'll see the folder that we put on here earlier in the power test. So here's everything that's indexed so far from my uh, folder structure. Uh, it's still going through the indexing process. So if we're just going to click on one random video, which you'll be able to see on one of my other channels, and we can have a look at a pizza cooling down through a thermal camera. Now when the NAS is in standby, it's using about 1.3 watts of energy just to listen out for any uh, remote reboots uh, or turn on commands, that's absolutely fine, uh, just the listener going all the time. Now we're trying to uh, put, turn it on, we're peaking at about 30 watts, so 31, 33, 36, and then it goes all the way back down. So that is the peak load I actually managed to get through the NAS itself, uh, I couldn't get any higher than that. So thank you for watching guys, I think the Terramass NAS is actually a pretty safe buy, uh, it's nice uh, middle ground on price, supports a load of applications, and it does appear like they're still developing the product itself, which is a very good sign. So thank you for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.